my dad especially would just pound some candy and Mountain Dew <laughs> and drive from the time that we were done on Sunday afternoon or evening at the track all the way home and go to work in the morning. Explain how your sister Brooke was at least partly mm. responsible for getting you into racing. Totally responsible. Um, yeah, well, when we were kids, um, my dad's always been involved in racing and we used to go to the dirt track on Sunday night. My dad would work on a car and we were too young to get in the pits. So we would get, like mo mom and dad would give us 20 bucks and we'd sit in the stands and we would go and kill the concession stands and get you know, like the rainbow snow cones and like licorice, like that was three feet long and whatever other candy I'm sure we could find. And, um, and so we'd watch dirt racing on Sunday, Sunday nights. And um, my sister wanted to start racing and she wanted to be the number that my dad worked on, 65. So I think she just wanted a number with number 65 on something, but um, like it could be that simple when we're kids, couldn't it be? Um, so anyway, and uh, there was a friend of hers that was in her class that raced go-karts. So um, they, ironically enough, lived in our neighborhood. So we went down, ironic, I mean, I grew up in a town of 5,000, so I guess it's not that ironic. Roscoe, Illinois. Roscoe, Illinois, yeah. I always say Chicago, and then they're like, oh, I know Chicago. I'm like, okay, do you know Rockford? And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, do you know Rock? No, I don't know Roscoe. Um, and so we went and looked at the go-karts and went to some races and, um, and started. And so she wanted to do it, and I feel like just in like the normal sibling sort of way, um, I didn't want to get left out. I'm sure there's things that went the other way too, but I was like, all right, I'll do it too. What are you going to do today? Gonna win. What are you going to do today? Gonna win. Gonna win. And she ends up eventually losing interest. Your interest only progresses. All of a sudden, you're having baseball cards made with your picture on it, uh, you know, T-shirts with your picture. Mm -hmm. What did the family weekend routine uh, eventually become? Um, it became leaving on Friday after school to go to the go-kart, to, to leaving on Friday morning, to leaving on Thursday night, to leaving on Thursday morning. And uh, I say that, but then usually mom and dad would get home from work because they still worked full time. Um, and we would get in trouble because we didn't have the coolers packed. We were never ready. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'd load the trailer up uh, and, and head on out. Uh, and we'd go, we'd drive anywhere from locally at the very beginning for the first year. So that was only, you know, 30, 40 minutes away to, um, it went so far as t uh, probably, as far as us driving, 20 hours. I mean, we'd go to Canada, wow. Florida, North Carolina, um, and then I raced out west, but we, we, we would get someone, like my dad had someone at work that would drive the trailer out there and we'd, we'd fly. But, but yeah, I mean, Phoenix, California. Um, so we kind of raced all over the place, but w my mom and dad would, you know, my dad especially would just pound some candy and Mountain Dew <laughs> and drive from the time that we were done on Sunday afternoon or evening at the track all the way home and go to work in the morning. And you were involved in a bunch of different sports growing up, volleyball, basketball, yeah. baseball, you were oh, a cheerleader. Yeah. Um, Started with t-ball, wait, coach pitch, then t-ball, right? Or was it t-ball, then coach pitch? Um, and then it was uh, track, and I did band, choir, uh, basketball, volleyball, cheerleading, tumbling, I took tumbling. What was it about racing then that, you know, even that early on made you know that what you wanted to admit all the other stuff you were involved in? You know, I, I loved setting goals and accomplishing them. I loved um, the process of getting faster over the weekend. I loved the mental discipline. I mean, you know, working with my dad on these things like, but you know, I would execute and I would even, I would think of little tricks too to do out there. Like I would reach my hand down, like I was gonna tune the carburetor to go faster. Say a lot of times out in the lead and I'd do that. And I wouldn't actually do anything. It was just to make them think I was doing something so that, and then they would do it and they would start going slower. Cause <laughs> I knew it wasn't time yet, like nothing too hot and we don't need to richen it up yet. Um, but I would trick them, like I would play little games. And I mean, I did that into my IndyCar days. I mean, I remember watch, I remember racing at uh, Milwaukee, which is a short little flat one mile track. And I would come down the front straightaway and I would dart out like I had like a really big run. And sure enough, they'd leave a lane for me and I'd pass them. Tell about the uh, public speaking course, the 12 week oh long my God, course yeah. you the took Oh my God, yeah. The Dale Carnegie yeah. speaking course. That was awful. 
I was 14. I think I was 14 years old. Um, and my basically mom, dragged to do it. My mom had to drive me there. The average age in there I brought down by a decade, I'm sure, because everybody's like a professional. They're at least 30-some years old in the class, 40, 50 years old, and they're learning like negotiate, like techniques to how to do better business and like there was a whole segment on remembering names which I clearly didn't pay attention in because I'm horrible at that <laughs> um, but uh, but that was painful um, one of my sponsors uh, paid for it they uh, they said hey we'll we'll pay for you to go to a to go to a speaking course and I guess you know all these things are just really interesting because somebody saw something in me they're not gonna you're not gonna send someone to a speaking course to learn how to like do something that's going to be important later in life if you don't think somebody's got it, right? So, you know, they saw something and they wanted to make sure that I was prepared. So they paid for it and I had to go. And I think it was like, you could only miss two of 14 classes. So <laughs> I remember bawling a couple times before I had to go.